Now the heel walks, you know, one of those that the kids kind of think is kind of a boring exercise, it's not real exciting, and it's not. But the mechanics of how they walk, how they run, and affecting keeping their knees safe is critical. So here with this exercise, what we're taking a look at is they stay on the heels the entire time with the heel walk. Toes don't touch the ground. The toes stay up as high as possible. That also works to develop the shins and help give good, strong shins. Now what I look for here on the feet, as they're walking, they need to stay centered. A lot of times what you'll see is you'll take a look at the kids do this exercise and the toes tend to roll outside or they're walking on the outside of their foot. By having the toes roll outside, the knees are going forward. If they're walking that way, I guarantee they're running that way. And every time they pivot, they're stressing the cartilage in that knee, possibly getting with real problems with the ACL. So we've got to take a look at this. It's a basic drill. As they go through it each time, it's a slow movement. They're stepping just to the edge of the toes, moving through, staying centered on the foot. So they're not on the outside or inside of the foot. Toes are straight, not out like a duck. Now for the heel ups, this is again one of those exercises that typically gets overlooked. We're really trying to get the ankles warm here, but we're also trying to keep the strength of it as well. So as we move into this one, I want to take a look at is he's taking small steps just step into the edge of the foot he's lifting as high as he can with a long step forward he's taking the weight completely off the calf and the ankle so we've got to make sure that we keep pulling into it nice and strong all the way through so we get a full reach as he rolls into it he's going to really lift up just as high as possible landing heel rolling on the toe lifting up so we're trying to gain the strength in the calf, get the ankle good and strong. So in order to do that, we have to take small steps and lift just as high as possible. All right, for the high knees, we've done these forever. Uh, it's traditional on all the football practices, you're going to see it. What we really want to take a look at again is making it more efficient. The reason they're doing the high knees, we're trying to get mechanics of running. Knees have to drive up. They've got to point the toe at the bottom of the ground to push the ground away from them. They need to have a forward lean, not standing up completely straight. And they need to drive with those elbows back behind them. So on this first one, as he's moving into it, you're going to see the body is really tall. Not a whole lot of arm action going through. The shorter the arm action the less stride length. Really making sure those knees get waist high every time. Now take a look at the one on the right. As he's moving across, elbows are really starting to pump behind him. It's good. He also coming into it, he's leaning forward with the hips, so his shoulders are forward. As an athlete, that's where we're moving. We're in that ready position. Knees also driving up big and high. And you can see on this one, we're not getting lazy feet. We're pushing at the bottom, which is what we're after. But we're also bringing that toe up, that dorsiflexion, up and down, pushing it. That's where we're going to get that drive pushing through. The one on the left, feet kind of just hanging. They're just going down. They're not really doing much of anything. So we took a look at these athletes together, side by side. see what they're doing on it. The athlete on the right is preparing to run faster. They're actually moving all the way through it. That's what we need to see each time. They've got to drive, eyes are forward, elbows pumping back. Let's teach them how to run at the same time in that practice. All right, for the heel ups or the butt kickers, we're trying to really warm up the quadriceps, the front of the thigh. So we're taking a look at is we're watching this straight line as much as we can here with the body. So the one on the left here, we have them look down at their feet the whole time. We're trying to make sure that number one, the feet actually land. They're staying on the balls of the feet, staying on the toes. So far so good. They're going straight. But as they bend that knee, 
if that knee comes forward at all, we're not getting the stretch we need to on that quadricep. It has to actually come behind the opposite knee, or at least to it, depending on their flexibility. So the one on the right-hand side we're taking a look at again, staying on the balls of the feet, he's moving nice, but when he actually gets a stretch, you can see that knee is going backwards. That's where we need to feel that. So here he's got maximum stretch. And even if they can't get all the way to the butt because their thighs are too tight, that knee has to come back behind. Without it, we're not getting that stretch. That's the key on this drill. Have them look down, make sure that knee's behind them. If they see it actually bending, they're not getting the stretch in that quadricep and they're wasting their time. For this shuffle drill, the primary thing we try and get them to understand is their eyes are always forward, they're trying to watch what's going on in the game. There's a pattern that's coming alive, but we don't know which way we're going to commit yet at that point. So we always want to make sure we stay on the balls of the feet, eyes are forward, hips and shoulders square to the target. Now, as you want to look at this, the one on the left typically is what I see happen. An athlete moves up and down as they go across. That up and down movement takes too long. We tell our athletes, you're watching that person. As you're getting ready to run, you're watching that guy in the backfield watch you. As soon as they straighten their body upright, that's exactly your time right now to take off into a run in this direction because it's going to take him a little bit to get into position to drop and change. Now however the one on the right hand side he's staying centered, he's moving quick, he's on the balls of the feet and he's level. So we're looking at everything staying right here. He stays centered coming across so we don't see a lot of the far side Going way down, way up, exaggerating the movement as we come across. We stay toes to the, on there, quick reaction, staying centered. I can move wherever I need to just as fast. Now this drill is just our basic shuffle with we'll change of direction. Shuffle will get into a big part for our athletes. We teach them to stay on the balls of the feet so they can react. They can't move from the flat feet and on the heels. So as they move through this, one of the things we look for and we're trying to take a look at is we want to make sure that they stay pretty centered. The only time they really make a big change is when they change direction. Otherwise, they move as if they've got something balancing on their head and they make a hard change of direction. That's when they drop the hips. So they've got to move into position right here. Looking, eyes stay forward. He's going to use this left leg. As soon as he makes contact with the ground, he's got to drop and push away. And a good, a good extension is you're going to see that foot pointing down, pushes away from the target. Good job in through here. Gets to the far side, same thing. Drop and pointing the toe, coming away from him. If they're not pointing the toe, the foot stays flat, they're really losing out on a lot of power. So you take a look at the athletes. And we will do some of them with a, a yell. I'll tell them left, right, moving into position. And then I'll stand up in front of them and I'll just give directions with the arm so they can see really what's happening. Those that aren't looking in the right direction, eyes are down, they're, staying, they're not going to see it. They've got to understand during that game their eyes are forward at all times. Pay attention to what's going on in front of them. Now these are the Frankensteins. We've done quite a bit. Uh, a couple of big things I want you to take a look at is with a traditional Frankenstein on the left hand side I see a lot when I go out to see different practices, work with different athletes at the beginning to see where they're at. And their primary focus is hamstring which is correct and that's great. But what we're looking at is trying to make things a little more efficient. So when we do this and he just kicks up and he walks around a little bit and kicks up the guy over on the right hand side has already done three kicks by the time he gets that second one off so the one on the right actually is going to get more reps over that 15 yards or whatever distance you have set up for him 
So the more reps, the more warm it's going to get, that's, that's going to give us our key. So when they make contact, they go right into the next. They don't mess around with wandering around or anything else. They just keep kicking. Now the big change I have for our athletes going into this is I'd rather get more than one thing at a time if we can. Again, make it more efficient. So by having the athlete on the right, as he kicks, he only kicks about halfway. But what's going on here on this position is now he's extending that arm beyond. When he does that, reaching the opposite hand, he's also getting that low back warm and his shoulder warm at the same time. And I guarantee he's feeling that hamstring as he pulls it across. So if we can get more things done at one time, we have more time for our drills for football, basketball, whatever we're working on. So pay attention to what they're actually moving, get a good kick. But again, it's more important with that forward lean, now I get that low back and the shoulder in by stretching and getting it all in at the same time. Now for the grapevine drill, we're seeing two different ones here, left and right. Left hand side is traditionally what I'll see when I go out to work with the team for the first. Uh, and I think the big idea for this drill is understanding what its primary purpose is. The grapevine is really to twist up the back, get the spine warmed up, hips, everything loose together at the same time. The one on the left you'll take a look at, as he does, it's traditional, he'll crank that hip up, moves big, and then the back step really isn't much of a back step. It comes behind, but we're not seeing a lot of hip rotation that we're really after. Big lift up top, but again, looking here at the waist, nothing really happens. Hip turn is good, but no rotation at the spine. Now the one over on the right hand side, what we want them to do is we tell them everything stays forward. Eyes stay forward, chest, shoulders, but they exaggerate that step. So that front step, when it moves over, you can see where the belly's facing over to the side. Good rotation. Now his next step, now the foot instead of like the other one, barely coming across, really exaggerates it. Keeps the chest nice and square here. But we take a look at what's going on with his hip, it's now facing the other direction. So we tell him it's like wringing out your spine like you would a dish rag. Exaggerate the motion coming across front, exaggerate it out back, take your time, get maximum stretch across. All right, on this drill, we do two different things. We'll have them run a lot of times sprint. We have them stop at the very end. And the big reason for that is we've got to try and watch, see what's going on with the knees. If they're prone to an injury from the knee rolling inside, or big part of it, too, is just how they change direction. How many times has a guy been juked out on the field? Because when he changes direction, the guy stops or leans over and moves. That's exactly when the other guy will take off. So you've got to have good body control, hard, quick power, be able to stop and change direction on a dime. So in this one, what I've got him doing is actually move him forward. When they have a hard time stopping on that position, have them go into a hard sprint, hit a point, go right into a back pedal, and see what's going on with the body. So on this position, when he makes contact, a lot of the guys will have a big pause before they go anywhere. When he makes contact with the ground, that left foot, as soon as he does it, he immediately pushes back. If there's any pause, you'll see a head drop down to the center or go into it. But if they do it right, as soon as they make contact, they push back. That's what you need to see. As they push, hips move backwards, eyes stay forward, everything's where it needs to be. So back him up just a little bit, drops into position, makes contact, and we're going to push back. Faster position as he moves into it, contact back.